Now let's turn to Iran, where a different battle is underway, a battle for legitimacy and for control. Iran is holding its general election today. 61 million people are eligible to vote, but reports suggest the turnout won't be high. In fact, it might be the lowest in their history, at about 41%. The last election was held in the year 2020. A lot has changed since then. Iran is struggling economically. Inflation is at 40%. And that's the official figure, 40%. Analysts say it's closer to 50%. Add international sanctions to this. And the falling value of rial, which is Iran's currency, combined, this means the economic situation is dire. Same with the social situation. In 2022, the world heard about the death of Masha Amini, a young woman killed for not wearing her hijab properly. It led to some of the worst protests in Iran since the 1979 revolution. The authorities came down hard on the protesters. Some 500 people were killed in clashes. Thousands were arrested. Some were even executed. The regime brought Iran under control with repression. So you can imagine why the people are not keen to vote. <laughs> Both our friends, those who love the Iranian people, and evil-wishers are watching our country and our esteemed nation's issues closely. Pay attention to this. Make friends happy and disappoint the evil-wishers. That was Iran's Supreme Leader Ayatollah Ali Khamenei. The first person to cast a vote today, he asked his fellow Iranians to do the same as an act of defiance against Iran's ill-wishers. Well, who would that be? For Khamenei, that's the U.S. and Israel. He believes they're hoping for a low turnout, so he's declared that voting is an obligation, an act of patriotism that every true Iranian must perform. We'll have to wait and see how many respond to his call. The votes are being cast today. Counting will be done manually over the next three days. Early projections should be in by tomorrow. Final results by next week. Now, why is this election important? It won't affect the balance of power in Iran. It still rests with the supreme leader. There are about 15,200 candidates in the fray, fighting for 290 seats in parliament. All these candidates are pre-approved, vetted by Iran's Guardian Council, which is a body appointed by the supreme leader. So the new parliament will not pose any threat to Ayatollah Khamenei. They don't really have the power to do that. In Iran, the supreme leader dictates key issues of governance. He decides the foreign policy. He decides the nuclear trajectory. So what does the parliament do? It deals with budgetary issues and other matters of administration. They can't challenge the supreme leader. Also, Iran doesn't have a strong party system. They have some 103-odd parties. These parties are bunched into factions like hardline, conservative, reformist. Now, most of the candidates this time are from the hardline and conservative factions. They're completely loyal to the Ayatollah. I believe that Iran should improve its relations with all countries, resolve its problems with the international community, especially over the nuclear issue, and lift the sanctions. Because if we fail to attract investors, we will lag behind our neighbors. She's a reformist leader from the same faction as former President Hassan Rouhani, the one who signed the 2015 nuclear deal. The reformists once had a strong presence in Iranian politics, but this time they've been gutted. Out of 15,000 candidates, barely 30 are reformists. The others haven't been allowed to contest. So whoever wins, it will be a candidate chosen by the supreme leader. Which brings me back to the question, why does this election matter then? Because people aren't voting just for the parliament today, they're also choosing what's called the Assembly of Experts. It's a body of 88 clerics, the Assembly of Experts. And they choose Iran's supreme leader. The current one, Khamenei, is 84 years old. Time is not on his side. He may decide to step down. So this new Assembly of Experts is crucial. They will choose Khamenei's successor. And so he wants to choose them. Those who don't align with his views have been disqualified. Like former President Rouhani. He's a reformist. He's been a member of this assembly since 2007, but this time he's been disqualified. The message is quite clear then. Only the loyalists of Ayatollah Khamenei will choose his successor. 
So Iran's present system will continue with or without Khamenei in charge. Things will not change in the country and the people know this, which is why the voter turnout is low. They don't think Iran's politics will change. So sanctions will stay in place. They don't think the clerics can fix the rampant inflation. And those who want to reform, or those who want reform, don't even have candidates to vote for. They might as well stay home and watch heavily censored TV. But if the people do show up to vote, Iran can say that it is following the people's mandate. Which is why we say this election is not about the result, it's about the turnout. The clerics want legitimacy. Will the people of Iran give it to them?